Hey there. Uh, in this video, I want to walk you through using Microsoft Teams, which is uh, an exciting new piece of software that we have access to as part of Microsoft 365. You uh, have probably heard a little bit about Teams because a lot of companies are using it um, as uh, they work remotely. Um, it has video conferencing uh, capabilities similar to Zoom. Uh, but what I think it's really useful for for us is uh, creating discussions, uh, meaningful uh, online discussions, um, posting uh, assignments and files, uh, as well as um, just increasing our accessibility to students. So I'm excited to show this um, to you. So uh, first, uh, what you need to do is just open your web browser and you can go to portal.office.com. And this will give you access uh, to all of the um, various Microsoft um, software that we have access to. And you just sign in with your um, regular MindCWC uh, username and password. Uh, you can also get to this by uh, through MindCWC by just clicking on the student email uh, link on the left. It'll take you to the same place. Um, I think that um, IS is going to update that eventually to, to make it more intuitive that this is how you can get to the Microsoft Office uh, portal. So you just from there go over to Teams and it will open up. You can also download this software. They have it available for Windows and Mac, uh, which I did just to make it a little easier. There are also uh, mobile apps for your smartphone, um, which I have as well, uh, so that I can uh, check in easily um, as well as get messages from students. So as soon as this uh, loads here, takes just a second. Another benefit of having the app, you don't have to sit through this. All right. And you'll get to this page, and you'll see our, I already have some courses set up here. Um, the one that I'm, I'm currently using to, to pilot this, uh, one of my summer courses. Um, but I'm planning to use this in some way um, throughout all of my courses because I think it, it solves a lot of the limitations that we all are very aware of regarding Genzibar. So to get started, you just go over here to Join or Create Team. Um, and you click Create a Team here. And I always use the Class option seems to have everything uh, I need. Um, basically, it just gives you different default options. So the class option works. You come up with a name for your class. I'm just call this example class. You can put a description in there. Um, and then you can hit next, and it will create the team for you. I uh, skip this part for now until I have things set up, but I'll show you how to add your students into Microsoft Teams um, right now. So whenever you're ready, whenever you have this set up, um, you can always go over here to Manage Team and Add Students. Um, so down here under Members and Guests, they'll start to show up as you add them. But it's really easy to add students. You can just go to your um, roster on your MindCWC course page and type in their um, email address and click Add. And they'll all be automatically added to the class. And they can access Teams just like you can through that portal.office.com. I provide a link on the uh, course MindCWC homepage for them to get to it. And it will show up once they're added in their list of courses. Um, so pretty easy to add students. You just have to, it, it'll it take, you know, you know, if you have a large class of 25 or 30, maybe five minutes to get them added in there, but um, it's not too bad. Uh, and uh, really, um, Microsoft Teams is uh, similar to Slack if you use it in that it's set up by channel. So you start here with one uh, general channel, which is usually just used to post announcements. Um, but all channels um, are set up the same. You can have different options. Um, typically, uh, the general channel I have set up just so I can make posts um, because that's the first channel they'll see. Uh, but for the subsequent channels that you create, uh, you can have it so that students can then add messages and reply to messages and all of that. Um, but really, each channel is uh, first and foremost uh, kind of like a, a chat room, um, so to speak. Um, it, once you start posting messages, you'll see it looks just like the conversations you're used to, whether you're, you're texting um, or posting on, on some sort of um, forum or group me or, you know, whatever the myriad um, pieces of software that people use these days. Um, so it's really easy to, to post. Um, you just, you'll see down here, the start a new conversation. Um, so you can just type a message and hit enter and it will show up there. And um, what's really nice is that you can post something and then students can reply directly to that. So they can make a reply um, to this. 
um, and it will show up there and it will group them by reply. So um, see, I just posted a new conversation um, down here and it's separate, but students can reply to that as well. So it's really useful for creating discussion um, in a way that doesn't feel so static as the forums do on my NCWC. This is um, uh, more fluid in that students, while they're typing, can see messages popping up, which you can't see on the forums. Um, students can be replying to different threads throughout the channel. Um, and it's just uh, much more um, user-friendly than the forums and um, has uh, the possibility for much more engaging conversations. Uh, so um, you uh, start out with this just general channel, but then you can add channels for anything you like. Um, for example, I have a channel specifically set up for debate, so I might call this debate one, and I'll add the channel, and it will show up over here. You might add a channel for uh, questions, so students can ask questions uh, to you. Uh, and one thing I should have done when I created the last channel is to make sure the check this box automatically show channel, otherwise it won't show up for everyone on the left. They'll have to actually click on add channel themselves and look for the available channels. So really important to have this um, box checked. But you can create as many channels as you like for different purposes. Um, and I typically, um, in my online course where I'm piloting this, I have uh, channels for specific debates. I have a channel for them posting questions. Um, since I teach political science, I have a channel for them to post interesting news stories that they want to talk about. Um, and uh, so it, it kind of organizes everything into these various channels so that you don't have, say, just one channel with all sorts of different conversations going on. You can kind of target the conversations um, that you want and group them by topic. So um, in each channel, um, I'll go back to the general, um, you'll see some tabs here at the top. Uh, you might not use all of these things, so um, Teams is set up to allow you to post assignments, for example, directly into Teams, where uh, students can go over here and click on the Assignments tab. You can set up assignments here and actually have them upload them into Teams. Um, there are some advantages to doing that in terms of if you're asking them to post Word files, since this is Microsoft software, it'll actually just pull up the Word document for you in your browser. You don't have to open it separately. But um, I think since we are still using Genzabar as our primary LMS, it could confuse students as to, oh, where do I turn things in? Do I turn it on Teams or do I turn it in on my NTWC? Um, so I would just say be consistent to what you're using. You can uh, do grades here as well, but given that we post them on um, Genzabar, um, you know, having a duplicate grade book might be more than you want. So you don't have to use um, these features if you don't want to, and I don't um, in my uh, online class. Um, there is a, a good place here for the, the files tab to post documents. Um, I've posted several course documents here um, in my course. I just put them in the class materials folder. Uh, the class materials folder are for things that you post that students can't modify, but students can actually post things here as well um, and have other students modify. So you could use this very easily for peer review. Um, you could set up a peer review channel and ask them to upload um, their documents to the files tab, and then all students would have access to everyone else's. They could read them, they could comment on them, etc. Et so um, there is some good um, potential here for... Um, you know, posting things in a, a more open and shareable way. Uh, in terms of when I do debates, I actually have specific instructions for the debate, so I'll go ahead and post them on the files tab in the, the debate channel. So if, if you have, you know, unique assignments for different channels, say one channel is a discussion of a novel you're reading, you might post directions specific to how you want that discussion to go as a file um, in, in the appropriate channel. Um, but you can post things there. Um, there's also a class notebook, which I haven't experimented a lot with, but um, basically if you've ever used OneNote, there's a OneNote notebook um, available for the class that you can set up here, and you can collaborate with students on things within the notebook. They can actually, um, you know, if you're, this would be really good if you're using, say, a journal, you're having them keep a journal um, in your class. You could set up a notebook for each of them, um, and they can just simply post their entries in that notebook uh, and you'll be able to see it and grade it and leave comments and all sorts of things. Uh, so um, that uh, I don't currently really use the class notebook, um, but there there is some potential there. 
again, I think the main um, or, or the best feature of Teams is, is this channel format to be able to have discussions um, off of those clunky Genzibar forums. Um, in the, the general channel, um, I also, uh, I primarily use this to post announcements. And if you click on this letter A down here with the paintbrush, you actually get a lot more formatting options. And you can go over here to um, announcement and actually have something that stands up, uh, stands out. Uh, so you might say exam due today uh, and uh, post it there. All right, text message, don't. And... Um, you can post it there so it, it kind of stands out and that's what I use the the general uh, channel for primarily um, another cool thing uh, about this compared to the forums is students can post reactions um, or uh, two different messages in the forum so I use the thumbs up a lot so uh, when you're teaching online uh, like we've had to do um, over the spring and, and like I do every summer uh, it seems like um, if you have a larger class there are a lot of messages that um, you know, students are having a discussion and you might not reply to every single thing, but I find this really useful to give a thumbs up um, to show that, that I'm present, I'm reading their, their, what they're writing, um, I'm just not making personalized comments to every single thing they post to let you know they're there. One thing I want to use this for in some of my classes in the fall when hopefully we'll be back to a face-to-face um, -face format is I want to have students post discussion questions in a channel and thumbs up questions they want to talk about. So I can look and see, okay, this question had, you know, 10 thumbs up. Uh, so we definitely, students definitely want to talk about that. So not only will they post their own questions for the class, um, but uh, they'll also indicate which of their, uh, the questions posted by their peers they really want to talk about. So that's really useful. Um, you can also do some fun things like post, uh, it's integrated with, uh, GIFs, um, so you can, you know, post support small businesses, um, and, uh, things like that. Um, what I, I, uh, like is this praise feature. So if a student posts something really good, um, you know, I can, you know, give them a little sticker that says awesome. You can write their name there, add a little note and everyone can see that. So you can kind of give students praise. I'm a little disappointed you're, you're limited to these, uh, 12 different things. Uh, but I've used awesome a lot and team player and, and achiever, um, at various points. So it, you can just kind of give a little shout out to students that are, are posting good things and doing really well. Uh, Teams also has video conferencing capabilities if you click down here. Um, you, can't, you, you need Chrome or Edge um, to use this on the, the web platform, but you can actually click um, this Meet Now button down here and it will start a um, video chat that students, once they um, log into Teams, can just automatically join. Um, I haven't used a, a, this much because my summer classes are, are asynchronous, but you know, say that we go remote uh, for some part uh, of the, the semester this year, um, that would be a really good alternative to Zoom um, in, in that you, you don't have to pay for it. Uh, students can join easily. They don't need to um, download any special software or anything. Um, should be easy for students to join. Uh, w there's actually a new update that will make it easier to schedule um, video conferencing meetings, and it should show up some here on, uh, sometime on the left. Um, where you can actually schedule meetings so that students have that on their calendar um, and that should be coming soon the um, is folks tell me whenever we update to the latest version that will be there what i really really love um, about teams um, is the the chat feature um, and this is actually uh, for all of your students across different teams and they'll all show up here on the left and um, i actually encourage students uh, to um, send me chats instead of emails uh, that they'll probably get a quicker uh, reply that email is good for some more you know complex things but if you have a quick question send it to me in the chat it pops up on my phone so I can just type it uh, type a response back really easily it gets rid of that formality of email where um, you know you have to write a greeting and then um, the body and then a, a closing you can just kind of send um, quick responses back and forth um, and I like that uh, you know, it's one of those things you can decide if, you know, you're too available or not and what hours you won't respond to messages. But since email is on most of our phones nowadays anyway, I don't think it, of it as much more of an intrusion um, in that way. But 
Um, I really, really like uh, the chat feature. Um, and so I, th I think that's about it um, for an overview of Teams. Uh, again, I think this is a really great tool for us uh, that we'll be able to use um, uh, sort of parallel to um, Genzabar, um, primarily for discussions and, and sharing and posting and making the class more engaging, particularly online classes or hybrid classes, as, as I think more of our classes are going to be a hybrid format. It just allows uh, more fluid and dynamic communication uh, compared to using the forums. Um, I've kind of just scratched the surface on the features here. There's a ton in here, um, and I think it's a little easy to be overwhelmed with all that you can do, but um, I just use it for a few simple things, um, and I found that, that students seem to like it. Um, there's not a huge barrier to accessing this, particularly if you place a link on your MindTWC homepage. Um, and I'm really excited to see um, how um, other faculty use this to make their classes better. So uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about Teams. Um, I'm really excited about this, so happy to help you. Um, and uh, I hope that, that you'll experiment with this.